It has been a while. I've been extremely busy doing hair. And so taking the time to actually sit down and record any videos, edit them, anything like that has been a task. But um, before I go pick up my little man from daycare, I wanted to make this video because y'all have really been tuning in to this, uh, I guess the series of me talking about having a hair company, starting a hair company, things of that nature. And I get asked every day, I get DMs about dropship or starting a hair company. So I just wanted to share some realistic tips that have been working for me in 2004 to actually make hair sales. So I'm going to get right into it. I feel like the number one thing that has worked for me is being a stylist. Do I feel like you have to be a stylist to sell hair? No. I've sold hair in the past and was not doing hair. This is my first time actively being a stylist and selling my hair to my clients. And that's really how it started. So I had stopped selling hair online for the last like four months to only focus on doing hair and my clients. And I have packages that allow my clients to get a really good rate on a sew-in plus raw hair uh, for a discounted rate. So it's cheaper than what I sell bundles alone for uh, retail. And so that has really helped me get clients, but it's also what I've noticed, it's allowed me to get a ton of people to wear my hair. Um, pretty much every client that I have, they get that package. Do I require all of my clients to only buy hair for me? Not at all. But um, because the deal is so good and it is raw hair, like this is the sea wavy and the hair is beautiful so because of that and this is actually a wig i want to release some wigs i'm testing out a five by five uh closure wig and um loving it i haven't worn a wig in forever and i forgot how dope it is to have like a finished style that i can always like slide on and you know know that it's gonna look good but this is just three bundles of uh rc wavy and Clients love the hair, it can be colored. I lifted this with 20 volume developer, like nothing major, and it lasts a long time. So I have have clients that just buy the hair from me because they love it, and, or really because they've seen other clients wear it. So what has helped me the most with the hair company is, if you go on my Instagram page, and that's not even every video or every client I've had because most of the time I'm doing like four people a day and I get just get tired after a while so I don't take as much video and then like the suite that I'm in the lighting's just really bad I have to rig like I have two lights plus the ring light like the lighting's just it's terrible in here so a lot of the time I don't take pictures or video content the way I should so I don't even have every single client but you have a good idea of the quality of my hair being my page because I have so many different clients wearing the hair and I do a lot of color jobs. So I have a lot of clients getting colors. So potential customers for the retail side of just the hair company, they can see lots of examples of what can be done with the hair. So I've noticed that has helped. Um, but you do not have to be a stylist or anything like that. You, I, How to make it work for you if you're not a stylist, collaborate with a stylist so if you are not a stylist collaborate find one two three four stylists that you like that make really good content that have a decent following that you can provide hair for to get that content so i'm actually doing that strategy now i gave hair i've done it before i've given hair to paris in la i've given hair to two stylists in houston i recently gave hair to wheezy who is a celebrity stylist in Houston. And then I'm sitting here to two other uh, stylists that do just really good content. And so that'll just help me to be able to gain more exposure. And then with that content, I'm gonna use that to run ads. So there's one girl in particular I just sent here to that didn't tell me that you can't send it signature with signature confirmation. So I'm having issues with the delivery. And so that's one thing I will say, get things in a contract to where if they don't get the hair and it's something on them, they're liable for it. Because I sent out eight bundles plus a closure, like that's a lot of money worth of hair. And so 
getting it to the the stylist so she can do the content is important but what i've noticed is you know everybody handles their business differently so she's not moving with any sense of urgency to make sure the hair gets delivered or anything like that which is just very frustrating to say the very least um so make sure you get a contract in place make sure you go over all terms make sure you discuss what happens if it's not delivered Make sure you send everything with signature confirmation. If they don't want signature confirmation, then you need to get something in writing that says, if this does not make it to you, you owe me the retail value of that product because she may think that it's not that big of a deal, but if I'm sending out eight bundles, that's eight bundles I'm losing, plus I'm not able to get the promo that I wanted. So I'm tying up bundles that I could have sold just because you're not handling your business. So. It's just, it's something to keep in mind, but then you don't want to push too much because the end goal is to receive the content. So you don't want to be rude and then they don't want to work with you at all. You have to think this is not personal. It's strictly business. And keeping that in mind, you have to be diplomatic. Yes, you want to be firm and create a solution, but you don't want to burn bridges to where you can't work with this person in the future so that's something to keep in mind but these are real life things that are happening for me in real time but um from every stylist that i've sent hair to i've always wanted exposure not necessarily looking for sales now this time around for my hair company because i've had multiple hair companies in the past this is the first time that i actually uh have spent a good amount of money because like Weezy's a celebrity stylist so his bag is substantial in terms of what he wants to promote your brand and um it panned out from the people that he refers me I made the money that I gave to him plus I have content so it works out but you have to before you work with influencers or hairstylists or celebrities just have in mind what you're wanting to receive from that collaboration. So for me, it was more so exposure and content. The hair sales is a bonus, but I really wanted exposure and content. And then he's in Houston and I'm a stylist in Houston or you know, I'm, I sell hair locally in Houston. So I wanted him to do it in particular so that he could send people my way that are local that are looking for hair. So that was why I chose him. So maybe there is a stylist in your city that's very popular that you can create a collaboration with if you have hair on hand, hey, if you refer your clients, that type of thing. So the content, yes, is a huge bonus, but that's all also something that works out um what else has worked for me lately having hair on hand works really well word of mouth is still a thing and putting in your bio that you have hair on hand has really been helpful in 2024 because people are able to get hair in real time as opposed to ordering online or anything like that um, so I would suggest to either get like a salon suite to sell out of or office building Figure out your security operation because it is still a lucrative uh, product. People do rob, especially here in Houston. I've just heard a lot about people being robbed, but you just want to make sure that you have some hair on hand that you can sell because I'll tell you, my clients book last minute. All my clients book last minute, like the day before. So having hair available allows me to not miss out on potential money because I have the hair readily available. So that's something to consider and to keep in mind. Um, so kind of to recap, uh, being a stylist has helped me make a lot of hair sales. Um, collaborating with other stylists has worked to get content and to get hair sales. And then um, having hair on hand has been very, very beneficial. There are some other things that I want to try. Um, I want to collaborate with different uh, women in different industries. So um, I want to collaborate with like nail techs and lash techs who see a lot of people on a daily basis and like do their hair or offer to pay to, for them to put like a video or a picture in their stories so that I can gain that exposure. Um, I'm also thinking about what else am I? I want to work with a like an influencer, like a mom influencer, to do her hair so she can kind of promote that to her uh, network as well. And um, what else? 
I want to collaborate with like the cancer center here, not so much uh, just to be a referral at for their clients because I am going to start releasing wigs and I deal in I deal a lot with hair loss, like a lot, a lot with hair loss. So I have I do mesh integrations, um, I do customized wigs and like customized sew-ins that traditional stylists may turn these clients away because they have hair loss from alopecia, cancer, postpartum hair loss. Um, whatever and their edges come out or they may have different patches so i create customized solutions for them which has done very well for me if y'all want me to talk about how i've been able to gain uh, a constant stream of clients based off the services i have i'm happy to talk about because my hair loss clients are probably my favorite and i get a lot of people that have been coming from other cities because every stylist does not know how to work with clients who have hair loss because it's not just like a traditional sewing you have to know how to cover certain areas or if you can't braid you know because they have patches that you can think of strategic ways to get them a really nice install so I've been doing a lot, but I want to talk to y'all more about, you know, um, building up my brand. So my focus is still being a stylist, but I also am focused on building up my hair brand, which was honestly not my focus in these last few months. I've had to kind of segment different things, but now that I'm getting my rhythm with being a stylist, hopefully I can hire a per assistant, like a hair assistant soon that can help me so we can take even more clients. Um, but now that I have that going, I'm now focused on building a million dollar hair company. So that is my plan. Um, I have a few things in the works that I wanna test out, but I will continue to come back to you guys and let you know what is working and what isn't working. But I wanted to just drop those three things that have been working for me recently that have really made sales for my business um oh and another thing i'm going to do is i'm going to start collaborating or like offering discounts for stylists to refer their clients to me um i do have stylists in houston that if their client wants to book an appointment and they don't have hair they'll refer them to me and i give them a kickback so i'll give them some money so just for the referral so i want to start introducing myself and my products to people and then letting the stylist know about the discount as well so they're more inclined to recommend my products to their clients um i got a busy day so i love you guys i will talk to you soon this is my birthday here i'm not done um i plan on adding a little bit more blonde here but baby i lifted this hair with only a 20 volume developer and you see how bright that guy is crazy and then just so you can see like it was not a blonde piece it was literally the same hair and just lifted like i've been on my color game y'all about to see some crazy units and sew-ins from me because um and i think i'm gonna do a color special next month because i have been taking color classes i've been practicing and i'm in my color bag and then these wigs are about to be phenomenal raw hair wigs that are going to be five by five and six by nine closures and that are going to last for years so i have a lot of amazing things coming i wanted to share just some of them with you i'm going to do more behind the scenes of me really building this hair company so you can see me packaging orders inventory all of those things because i'm having to juggle having hair in-house for my clients as well as having hair for like local people to pick up and online sales so three different avenues which Figuring out the proper way to keep all of that organized is such a task, but we gotta figure it out. And then I'm gonna break down how I'm doing my retail prices and what my profits are and how I can reinvest and about how much money I need to make retail in order to no longer have to put money in myself, but the business will start funding itself. That's important to me. And then from there, at what point, um, like how many bundles I need to sell and everything so that I can actually make a profit. So, baby, we're back at it. We're in the game. I'm so locked in and so focused, making sure that I build this business and build it correctly to be profitable. Not just say I make money just to make money, but to actually be a profitable business that I can, you know, lead to my babies, that I can take care of my mama and my daddy, like that everybody can be good. So come along with me for this journey. I love you guys and I will talk to you soon. Bye.